In this video, we're going to tie a blue winged Oliver merger. So, you don't want to miss this video. It's something you must have in your box this winter right now. Hey, Long Riders! Welcome back to Everything Fly Fishing. In this video, we're going to teach you how to tie a really cool blue winged olive emerger. You won't want to miss. You want to have these in your box right around this time. Just in case you hit that dry fly hatch, you know. It does happen in the winter. These mid or these uh, blue winged olives happen. Anytime, they can pop off. So, make sure you have them. Make sure you're ready. And also, check out the materials we used below. And each below that, there's a link where you can find the materials to tie these flies. As we tie them, you can go there online, order your materials, and it helps us cha our channel grow. And also, if you're here on Facebook, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're going to reach 5,000 by this time next year. Help us make that goal. Help us bring better videos. All this helps out. Thank you. Now let's get to the vice. We're going to start, debarb the hook, we debarb this hook and put it back in the vise and we're going to tie on olive 70 denier. Now I like 70 denier on these small, small flies. It's really fine line. So we're going to use 70 denier fly line and we're going to wrap that about halfway back to the bend of the hook and come back up to about an eyelet distance away from the eyelet. Now we're going to tie on our single wing that we're going to use for this merger. And I will show you a picture right here. And these are the wings I'm going to use. You could use uh, CDC or just regular yarn, any kind of floatable yarn material that's gray. Uh, but anyway, we use this. We're gonna use these in the future, so you might want to go back. I think I'll, I'll put a link down below where you can order them, or you can order them here. And I, this is not affiliate marketing, so we give nothing. But anyway, they come in twos. You're gonna want to do is you're gonna take. You're, they're made like this. They split in a V, so that you can tie wings on when you're doing a, a dry fly. So you just cut one side of that off, and you're only gonna need a little bit because you only want to make the wing the length of the shank of the hook. Now, when you're tying this material on, now you only want a little bit. I tie this on size 18, but anyway, you want to face the cutoff material towards the back of the hook, not towards the front. You want to make that head that big, so you're going to face it towards the back so you can taper the thread up to build your body up. And I'm tying this on a size, I think, 16, just so you can see it. You want to tie these on size 18 or 20s. And when 20, it's too hard to film. So this is a 18 scud hook or caddis hook. Next, we're going to tie in 
For, well, we're not going to tie in a tail on this fly. We're going to tie in a trailing shuck. And what we're going to use is it's it's a ice. It's like an ice dubbing. We've been using it on some of these flies. We're going to use it a little bit later in lighter parts of the fly. And it's gill colored. And we're going to take this stuff and we're going to roll it up in our fingers and almost make like a noodle out of it. And then we're going to tie that noodle in. And we're not going to cut that off yet. And then we're going to run our thread up and start even out the body and tying this stuff in. Next we're gonna next we're gonna tie in some black thin ultra wire. We're gonna tie it right here in the point where that you cut off that material so that it makes a taper, a natural taper, so you don't have so to help build up the material behind where you cut off the uh, the wing material. And you're going to run that, your thread and that wire all the way back to where you started to shuck. The shuck starts. And that'll make a natural taper to the body. And you're going to take your thread and build up your body so that you have an even big section that behind the wing down to a real little sec tiny section at, right behind the shuck and it has that natural taper and not big humps and drop offs and you're gonna do that then you're gonna take you're gonna take the this is olive green rabbit hair and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the hair the rabbit hair in your hand and pick out the guard feathers and you'll see when the guard feathers there you can tell they're real long and they look like a regular hair all the rest looks like a fluff you're going to use that fluff because you don't want to have them guard hair sticking out so you're going to get rid of all them guard hair hairs out of this and then you're going to put a really teeny bit of dubbing on and when I explain this to people when I'm doing like a class or whatever I'll, I tell them you're just going to change the color of the thread because you already have that body you know built up so you don't need no uh, dubbing to build up the body. Now we're going to put a whip fin in it because we're going to use the rotational vise. Now we're going to start ribbing this. Now remember you want the, fret, the rib, ribbing in the back to be closer together than the front. And you kind of want to make even wraps as you possibly can. I mean, the fish aren't going to take it if the wraps aren't perfectly even. So, you know, don't stress it too much. And we're going to rib it right up to behind the wing. Now we're going to cut that wire off right behind the wing, cover it up with some thread wraps, and get ready to work on the thorax.
Now we're going to pull that wing back and put some thread wraps in it, or in front of it, sorry. We're going to put some thread wraps in front of it to make it stand up. And then we're going to take our thread back to where we tied off that wire and get ready to dub. I love dubbing. I like dubbing flies, so we're going to do a dub dance. Dub dance. Dub dance. Applying flash dubbing dub dance. All right, silly time's over. Now, we're going to apply uh, some ice dubbing, flash dubbing, uh, olive. And we're going to put it right behind the wing. And then we're going to, when we knew, when we put this dubbing on, we're going to start a little bit bigger. Well, we'll start then and go big. And then really thin the end because we're going to wrap one thread wrap in front of the wing before we tie it off of dubbing. Now we're going to add two sets of whip finishes to the front of this fly to form a head. But wait, we're not done yet. I bet you forgot. I'll bet you did. We got to cut the shot to length. And you want that to be a hook gap in length. Cut that off. And now we're done. This fly is complete. Let's take a closer look right now. Hey, long riders. Hope you like that video. Um, you're going to be asking yourself, or probably write me messages asking me why I use so much of this ice dubbing. Um, I used it a lot this year for the first time, so I didn't do many videos last year using it because I wanted to test it out. And what I found was pretty amazing results is uh, one, I used it on a caddis, and I had it black, and it was a tan caddis coming off. And they wouldn't hit the tan caddis that actually was on the water, but they railed the black um, ice dubbing caddis, even though it wasn't the right color. And I could have tied tan ice dubbing. I just had black on me. I didn't have any tan on me. And I'll show a link to a video right here of that, the actual fish we caught on that fly that day. And I used it on nymphs, and the same nymph out it, just doesn't do as well with it and with around that wing I like to leave that straggly to represent legs and pieces of shuck stuck to the fly whatever it just looks like a mess right there and when as it's merging its wings are popping out and all kinds of things are coming out of it and this this ice dubbing on the shuck makes a shine to it that makes it look like a shuck and on the ice dubbing around the wing it makes it stick out like a shiny, like things are happening, the bubbles or whatever. And I think that's why it works. So I like using ice dubbing. And the, as far as that wing goes, if you go back to that picture or look at that thing, there's actually an email address on there and everything where you can go buy these wings. I like them a lot. They float extremely well. Um, we used them on wing caddises. And we're going to do it on the dry fly for this, which is next. Um, we're going to use these and, and that'll be a little bit twisted different too. You know, I can, you can go back and look 
I'll put a link up here somewhere where the dry fly, the original dry fly video I tied a year and a half ago, whatever, on how to tie the blue winged olive, uh, what do they call it, Catskill style, I think they call them, style dry fly. So check that old video out, and um, make sure you check the links below the material list, and check out the material list. Don't text me and say what size hook did you use. It's below here in the material list. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you subscribe. If you use the links below, there's ones now for Target, Bass Pro Shops, other out. If you use any of them to do shopping, we get percent. It helps make our channel better. And if you use these filler, I'm gonna tell you, you know them irritating ads at the beginning of this video that you had to either skip or click out of, or you use them affiliate links enough. And we won't need AdSense anymore. We'll we'll get rid of all them ads. But you gotta make sure that you know. You gotta make sure that we're making more as much off affiliate ads as we were. Off AdSense, which is how we get paid through the ads. So there you go. Know, goals is to get rid of these ads. That's how you can make it happen. And. uh Uh, is there anything else I wanted to say? Oh, we will be doing this Sunday. We'll be doing a live stream, but we're going to do it. We're going to change the times. Um, I know this is going to be harder for you people to show up. Uh, hopefully not. If it is, you know, let me know. We'll see how the outcome is, see how many people are there. But what we're going to do is we're going to start it at 9 o'clock in the morning. What we're going to hope it for is that we've been doing it too, and the internet speed, everybody's on the internet at 9 o'clock or at 2 o'clock. By moving it to 9 o'clock in the morning, hopefully our streams will be better, less la 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 lagging and all that. And uh, we've been doing tests, and it seems to be that yesterday morning at like 7 or 8 in the morning, the internet was speed was double of what it was at three o'clock or two o'clock so we're gonna try this out and see maybe it'll make a better for you guys who are watching the live stream and it'll make the replay better so we're gonna give this a shot so make sure you're here Sunday at 9 a.m. and like at the end of all our videos you can see play this for this series which I go back and check out the midges. You're going to be winter fishing. You're going to need all these flies for winter. Down here is a video just for you. It goes by what you watch the most. And over here is a subscribe button. And if you're watching this on Facebook and you haven't subscribed, I'd get on it because we don't post every video to Facebook. And if you don't want to miss a video, subscribe for more. Keep your lines wet, out of the trees, and only give them fish. Sore lip.